Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Oof, sounds like classic warning signs for dementia. That's sweet you interact with them as often as you do, OP. Remember to be patient with them if this is the case. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. You know me and that I don't work here. For some backstory, I own my own business and have a work truck outfitted with various tools and specialty equipment for my job. There's a couple of longtime friends of my family who've known me since I was a little kid who live a couple streets over from me. When I'm on my way to work in the morning, I often pass right by their house. And if the weather's nice, they'll be out working in their yard. If I know I'm going to have a short day, I'll pull in their driveway and say hello and catch up for a few minutes before heading on to work. They're always fun to talk to, the husband's a retired professor, and the wife is a freelance writer. I'll call them professor and writer for this story. So a couple weekends ago, I'm working on repairing the fence around my backyard and need to go to the home improvement warehouse store in town to buy some fence boards. My wife asked me to pick up some buckets while I was there. I pull into the lumber yard, grab the boards I need, then head inside the store to find buckets. On the way back to the exit, with a stack of buckets in my arms, I see Professor and Ryder in the flooring section with an employee helping them schedule a flooring install. I walk up with a big smile and wave hi. Me. Hi, Ryder. Been a few weeks. How are you guys doing? Ryder. Oh, hi, OP. They messed up our install, so Professor's trying to sort it out. How are you and the family? Me. Good. Working on my honey-do list today. Wife and kiddo are good. So sorry to hear your flooring install got mixed up. You mind if I set these buckets down in your cart for a sec? I plunk the buckets down in her shopping cart and sit down next to her on his skid of flooring boxes. Professor looks up from the computer screen, him and the employee are hunched over, waves hi to me and asks his wife a question about dates for the install. She shrugs her shoulders and looks at me and says, I bet you'd know how to sort this out. I laughed and said, I only do flooring if it's my own and I rarely have time for my own, just ask my wife. Ryder chuckles, and we talk for a couple minutes, just catching up. After a bit, she asks me if work has been busy. I tell her yes and no, because the pandemic has made supply chains so wonky. Some days I just stay home because of not having any inventory to work with, and other days I'm working from dawn until dusk because everything showed up all at once, and my customers need everything done ASAP. Professor asks her a few more questions about the flooring, Apparently, the computer system's glitching out and won't put the work order in properly. She turns to me and asks, Could you get on there and fix the computer, OP? Me, laughing. I'm not really a computer tech. I don't know. Have they tried turning it off and back on again? Ryder, I bet you could. You fixed Professor's computer a couple years ago. I don't really remember what I did, but I think it was just connecting to the Wi-Fi after the cable company sent them a new router. Me. Well, I don't think they'd appreciate me messing with their computer system. We chatted for a couple more minutes. They'd been forced to cancel their annual vacation to Arizona due to the recent Delta surge. So they were reflooring their living room with the money instead. Me. Well, I should head out. I have a lot of work to finish this afternoon. It was good to see you guys. Ryder. Good to see you too. So when did you start working here? Me. Confused look. Writer, it's nice to know someone we can trust and not mess things up works here now. We'll ask for you next time we come in and need something. Me. Oh. Uh, the employee sitting at the computer terminal and I glance at each other and she has a confused look on her face too. Me. I don't work here, Writer. Writer. What? But you're wearing... She trails off as she realizes I'm not dressed like the girl at the desk. We're both wearing work boots, but that's where the similarity ends. She was embarrassed. Her husband just shook his head. I asked her if all that time spent at Berkeley in the 60s was starting to catch up with her. She told me that I had missed all the good stuff, being one of those annoying millennials and all, and asked how I couldn't possibly be aware that wearing muddy work boots and jeans meant that I worked at every home improvement store anywhere. If you can't tell, we both have really sarcastic and snarky senses of humor. We had a good laugh. I waved bye until next time, picked up my buckets, and headed out. Still, I couldn't help to think as I walked out, you know me. You see me every few weeks in my work truck going to work in the major city about 45 minutes from here.
And our second story. I don't give a damn about your kid. I made the mistake of wearing khakis and a red shirt into Target once. I got asked so many questions, but just laughed it off. One lady, though. I was looking at makeup, and this lady with her small child came running up to me. She asked where the bathrooms were, and I told her I had no idea. She went from 1 to 100 and started screaming that her child was about to have an accident, so I better get on my radio and figure it the F out. I said, I don't work here, and frankly, I don't give a damn about your kid. She went stomping off, so I went to grab groceries. As I'm wheeling up to pay, lady taps me on the shoulder and says gleefully, remember me? You're getting fired. I look over to the manager who looks me in the eye and says, I don't recognize you. Do you work here? When I said no, he looked really exhausted and said, I'm sorry, ma'am. Enjoy your day. The crazy lady was still insisting he fire me as I was leaving. Poor guy. I never made that fashion mistake again. And our next story. Contact my boss while they're out. I work in a customer service based role, though my job does entail other tasks not customer facing. Customers have accounts with my company and I'm able to access and view many account details. We have a customer who always demands to speak with my boss. She doesn't like talking to myself or the other lowly peons who can't possibly know anything or assist her. I've had past occurrences with this customer to already have her on my list of craps, though granted she isn't the highest person or even in the top three. My office opens at 9 a.m. and I have yet to be proven wrong that whenever the phone rings right at opening, it will not be a good slash fun slash pleasant conversation. The clock strikes 9.04 a.m. and the phone rings. I take a deep breath and prepare myself for a myriad of potential issues I'm about to hear. A shrill voice, one I recognize immediately, is on the other end, but I still give my typical cheery greeting. Shrill voice. I need to speak to boss's name right now. It's very important. It's about my account. Me. Oh, boss's name isn't in today. I'll be back tomorrow. Is there anything I can help you with? Shrill voice. No, only they can help me. It's about my account. I have to speak with them. It's very urgent. It's about my account. Me. Well, they're out of the office today, but I can let them know you called and they can call you back when they're back in tomorrow. Shrill voice. That is unacceptable. I have to talk to them today. I know you have contact information and can get in touch with them. You need to contact them and have them get in touch with me today. Now, I need to pause because that part, the part you just read, is what really pissed me off. Never mind the extremely rude and disrespectful tone I was hearing. I deal with that. Anyone does when you're in customer service. But how dare you say it's unacceptable for someone to be out of the office because you need to talk to them. You have no idea why they took a day off. It's none of your business, but you still have no idea if someone died, if they're violently ill, if they're taking a much-needed and well-deserved vacation, and you want me to disrupt any one of those possible scenarios because you need to talk to them about your account? Nah, hun, I don't think so. Okay, back to the story. Me, wheels already turning about how to comply. Well, I can try to reach out, but again, they're not here today, and I cannot promise they'll get in touch today. May I have your name and account number? Shrill voice states their name, which I already knew, and instead of their account number, which I also knew but wanted to confirm, she provides her phone number, because obviously I'm going to immediately do as she demanded. I pointedly ask again for the account number and she provides it. She again states that she must talk to my boss and they need to call her today and says goodbye and then hangs up on me. I have a few pet peeves, some minor and some not, and she hit almost all of them during that conversation. So I did as she asked and contacted my boss. I texted them about a different matter altogether and had a lovely little text conversation, never mentioning shrill voice and her demands. I did send my boss an email letting them know that shrill voice had called and her demands, but it was about an hour or two after the initial call from her. I didn't mark the email as anything special and my boss has been out of the office for three days, so it'll be lost in the sea of emails my boss will come back to. When my boss gets to the email, they can then reach out to her. Also, fun little speculation on my part, I'm almost positive I know what this customer was calling about, because again, I can see her account information, and I could have helped her answer her questions right then. And our last story. Crazy HOA member is towing cars. 
Me and my neighbors have noticed some strange behavior from our HOA president. He's obsessed with keeping parking violators out of our parking garage. He's doing so clearly within the bounds of our bylaws, but he's almost petty about it. He focuses on it to a ridiculous degree, even though the property looks like crap and every other day brings a notice about the water needing to be cut off for some minor repair, the gate system failing, the heating slash air slash elevators being out, etc. It just seems like a stupid waste of time. To clarify some on how parking at our association works, all units have specific parking spots assigned to them and the association management has a listing of who owns what space. Per our bylaws, you lose access to park, really access to the gate system itself, if you fail to stay current on dues. You also can't park an inoperable vehicle on site, which per the bylaws is any vehicle sitting for more than 14 days or with an expired tag. One fairly new resident purchased a unit with two spaces. She parked a truck intended for her soon-to-be driving age son in one spot and her car in another. While she was away one weekend, the PM put a sticker on the truck to indicate it would be towed, then towed it 24 hours later. He gave her no notice, though he certainly knew who owned the spot. When she returned on Sunday, her truck was not there, prompting her to contact the police, believing it to be stolen. Similar horror stories of him actively searching for expired tags have also surfaced. What I can't understand is why he's so focused on this. Per his own admission, neither he nor the association profit from towing. He already cut off most people's gate access if they're behind on dues, so tailgating in consistently to park is going to be a challenge for them. His attitude on punishing residents even shows in our annual budget, where fine revenue was up over three times the budgeted amount. What could he possibly be accomplishing with being a petty police officer while ignoring needed maintenance of the property? When the election started, I've decided to send him into retirement. Vote for me if you want this a-hole out of our hair for good. Guess who's the new board member now? That's right, your much-respected OP. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.